So just say one of your data drive fails on your server, and the only disk you got to replace it is actually larger than your parity drive. So what to do in that situation? Well, that's what this video is all about. So in this video, we're going to be looking at swapping out a data drive to one which is both larger than the existing drive, but also larger than the parity drive. So to do this, we have to do a special two-step procedure to be able to achieve this. And this method is different from just changing the parity drive, and it's called the parity swap procedure, or the swap disable procedure. So why would we need to do this? Well, let's look at this server here. At the moment, we've got an array of four drives. We've got a 3TB parity here, two 3TB data drives, and one smaller 1TB data drive. Now let's say we need to replace the 1TB drive here. So what are the rules when we swap a data drive? Well, we have to replace it with a drive that is either the same or larger than the one that we're replacing. But it can't be larger than the parity drive. The parity drive must always be the same size or larger than the largest data drive in the array. So if I wanted to replace the one terabyte drive here, then to replace it, I'll have to replace it with a drive that's the same or smaller than the parity. So it has to be a drive that's three terabytes or less. But also, it would have to be the same or larger than the data drive I'm replacing. So it's gonna to have to be at least one terabyte or above. But at the moment, I've only got a four terabyte drive that I can use to replace the one terabyte drive. And because this is larger than the parity drive, then it's not gonna work. Well, it's not gonna work until I've upgraded the parity drive, that is. So the easiest thing to do would be just to upgrade the parity drive to the four terabyte drive, after which then use the old parity drive, the three terabyte one, to upgrade the small one terabyte data drive. So that's nothing too complicated there then. We would just swap the three terabyte parity drive for the new four terabyte disk. After which we would run a parity sync, which would use the existing data drives to create the parity information using the XOR algorithm. And by the way, if you're interested in how parity works, then I have an old video that I made a few years ago explaining about parity that you can see here. So after we've upgraded the parity drive to four terabytes, we now have a spare three terabyte drive. So we can use this drive to swap out and replace the small one terabyte drive. Basically, we just stop the array, swap the drive with the larger three terabyte drive, then start back up the array, and then Ray would just rebuild the data. So job done. And in that situation, that would be the preferred way to upgrade the parity drive and the data drive. And that's all very well and nice. But what happens if we're forced to upgrade the one terabyte drive due to a drive failure? Well, that's where things get a little bit more difficult. So let's simulate the one terabyte drive failing now. And I'm gonna make the hard drive fail the old school way with a hammer. Mm, I don't know if it's failed yet. Maybe it'll still be working. A couple more whacks should do it. Okay, I think that hard drive is pretty much failed. Okay, so the server certainly can't see that drive now. And if I start up the array, this disk is now being emulated from the parity and the other data drives. So if I was to go and have a look inside, I've got some very important data here that I don't want to lose. So basically I need to replace this disk as soon as possible. But the problem is, is I've only still got that four terabyte drive. So I can't just put it in here and rebuild from parity because a four terabyte is larger than this three terabyte drive. So let's have a look at what Unraid does if we do actually try and break the rule and replace the data drive with a drive that's larger than the parity. So with the array stopped, if I try and change this and replace it with the four terabyte drive here, you can see here it doesn't allow us to start the array. It's telling us that if we're adding a new disk or replacing a disabled disk, then to try parity swap. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we need to do is we need to unassign this parity drive here and also unassign this disk three. And then we'll get to reassign the parity drive with the larger four terabyte drive here. And then for disk three, I'm gonna assign the old parity drive that we just disabled a moment ago. 
and we can see here we've got two blue icons. And now we've got the option here to be able to copy the parity information to the new parity disk. So what it's going to do is basically copy all the parity data from here onto here. So let's do that now. So we can see here that the parity here is writing and this drive here is reading. So we're just swapping the data from the old parity onto the new one. Now obviously while this is happening, the array isn't usable. We're going to have to wait till this is finished. And this is probably going to take a little bit of time, a good few hours, so let's speed this thing up. OK, nine hours have passed now and it's all done. And looking at the parity drive, it says that everything's normal, everything's fine. And the contents of disk three, that's still being emulated because we haven't rebuilt that drive yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. And here it says that if we start the array, it will expand the file system of the data disk and then bring the array online and start the data rebuild. So let's do that. And again, that's going to take a little bit of time. Looking here, it's going to take around five hours to complete. So I'm going to cut the video and then come back when that's done. OK, so now the process is complete and the data disk has been rebuilt. It took eight hours and 11 minutes with an average speed of 155 megs per second to rebuild the drive. And we can see that it says disk 3 is returned to normal operation. OK, so that's it all done. That's how to upgrade a failed drive with one that's larger than the existing parity drive using the parity swap method. Now, I'd just like to thank all of my patrons and supporters, without whom these videos would not be possible. So guys, thank you so much for your support. And anyone who'd like to join this great bunch of people and help support the channel, then there are links in the description. And if you like this video, then please just take the moment just to hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, then please feel welcome to subscribe. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.